Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I'm going to answer a question I got in the comments when someone asked, hey, why lift with chains? And he, he was actually saying it during one of my deadlift max effort sessions. He's like, why not just add more weight to the bar? What's the point of chains? I don't get it. And I think it's important for us to under, understand this in the context of conjugate type training, meaning I personally tend to, with very rare exceptions, only use chains for max effort work or for dynamic effort work, and I actually prefer bands most of the time for dynamic. I like chains to change it up every now and then. I prefer bands. But that's where I use it. Other than maybe some tricep exercises, you won't really see me advocating uh, a lot of chain work for reps and hypertrophy. Now. Here's what people need to understand and why I don't, and then we'll go into why I do on the others. The argument for some hypertrophy is that, well, usually at a lot of exercises, some exceptions, uh, such as pull-ups, for example, the point of greatest mechanical tension tends to be at the bottom of the lift. Therefore, that is where most of the work is done, and that is where the most hypertrophic potential exists in the majority of exercises. That's what the data says, that's what studies show even when partials are used and then hypertrophy is measured, it's the bottom of the movement. Okay. Part where we get the most mechanical tension tends to be where the most hypertrophy occurs. By adding chains we can change the strength curve to where there's more mechanical tension at other points. Now, people will then argue, well, that might give a benefit because then we're, we're getting more hypertrophy potential through the, the full rep. And while that's a, a cute argument, it's never been validated, meaning I don't know that it's enough of a difference to matter unless you're using extremely heavy chain weights. What do I mean by that? Uh, maybe, maybe if, let's, let's say you're doing a 200-pound exercise, You've got 100 pounds of chains that completely unload at the bottom and only 100 pounds of straight weight. Maybe in that context, but keep in mind, we're still unloading it and reducing mechanical tension at normally the point where the most hypertrophy exists. Now, could you do this to change things up? Could you do this to reduce overuse risk on an exercise you really, really like? The answer is yes. The answer is yes, which comes over to the point of max effort work. It's the benefit of chains. Chains basically just add a mechanical change, unlike bands which have a more dynamic effect, to where you're adding weight as the weight goes up, as the chain uncoils off the, off the ground. Now, that changes the strength curve, not automatically the velocity curve unless you're intentionally doing compensatory acceleration, but changes the strength curve in such a way that we can handle heavier loads. In other words, if your max is say 400 pounds, you can probably do, do, do 350 with about 100 pounds of chains, probably, depending on the exercise and your personal strong points. But on average, uh, for most exercises, that's probably true for most people, right around that range. What does that mean? That means that if we're doing ME work, max effort, we can do it more often if we rotate variations. Okay, that's something that people have to understand we reduce overuse risk by changing variations. Now also in this case, if we're using chains for a lot of it, what happens? We're reducing tension at the points where normally we have the most. That's also the point where our overuse is probably highest over time, especially lifting the heavy weights. You know, people talk about getting hurt by lifting heavy. No, we get hurt from overuse. Now, heavy can contribute to that heavy overuse of really heavy work can become a potential injury risk. Sure, absolutely. But if we use change for some of the movements, we would reduce it for that week. On top of that, the chains will also get us used to unracking and holding or handling, depending on the exercise, or sitting on our back or in our hands, a heavier weight than we could normally handle. It can, in theory, and this is one theory, and I don't know that I always buy into it, it can, in that case, potentially prime the nervous system to handle those, those heavier weights, okay? Right, prime it to handle those heavier weights. And that's not a bad thing. 
or as a lot of people like to call it, say in the strength world, overloading. I don't know that I personally ascribe to that hypothesis. Okay, I know it's very popular. I think it's questionable personally, but a lot of people ascribe to that idea. And you know, and if you do, then it makes sense in that context also. Now here's where the real use of this stuff comes in. Speed work. Speed work to where we take very, very light weights and we lift it as fast as possible with compensatory acceleration. With a goal of trying to get that weight moving, you know, close to one meter per second, right? At the at the peak velocities. All right, so here's the problem with speed work. The heavier we start at the start, the harder it is to accelerate it. So if it's lighter at the start, which Shane's going to allow us to do, to down to where we're getting very, very light, what does that mean? It means we can get more velocity at the start and then accelerate it quicker. Now, the problem we run into also with really light weights when lifting explosively, or any lift when lifting explosively, we decelerate as we get near the top. Our, our rate of acceleration reduces because we come back over and think about those moment arms and what we were talking about mechanical tension at the top versus the bottom. We don't have as much mechanical tension at the top, therefore we can reduce force production and the weight will keep moving fast. So our, our deceleration starts increasing further down the rep. Well, what happens when we add accommodating resistance to that, whether it's bands or chains? In order to maintain the speed, in order to maintain that bar speed, as the weight gets heavier, we have to continue to produce more force to explode with it. So if our goal is to maximize rate of force production and to sustain it longer and take that deceleration curve to where it decelerates later as far as more inches or centimeters higher up in the movement, the chains and trying to outrun them can do that, All right? It can absolutely do that. And that becomes of great benefit to us in that environment. Now, could we say the same thing with max effort work? Oh yeah. Bands are even stronger in that response, but you know, we can only handle so much band work. Uh, it's easy to overtrain on band work, in my opinion, and a lot of coaches. But we can get the same thing on max effort work. You have to move the weight quickly. You have to continue to accelerate it when it's near maximum weight with the chains or what happens. If you don't outrun the chains and you can't maintain that force production, you try to grind it, you may miss the rep. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys next time.